Um, with that, we're going forward, and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. Uh, I think in life that uh, whenever you have a, um, a, a either a downturn or a, a problem or something that you've got to face, a challenge, uh, it should, if you're healthy about it, make you stronger. Does this news increase the likelihood that Vic will come back with the Philadelphia Eagles? I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. You know, that's the big question going forward is who will be the quarterback of this up-tempo style offense. I'd say this is very shocking news, but it'll be very welcome news in Philadelphia, Jay. Catches everybody up to speed, kind of following along with the actual timeline of the Philadelphia Eagles. We end up as a you know a top five team in terms of a draft pick. When in reality, the expectations for Andy Reid and the Philadelphia Eagles to go back to another Super Bowl was to finish top five overall. Um, so Andy Reid was relieved of his duties, and much like the Philadelphia Eagles, when you guys in the comments, as you can see, wanted me to go with Mariota, it just it made too much sense to make that jump, to make that switch, and have Chip Kelly become our head coach. So it's it's a weird timeline, but it's a timeline I'm welcoming to finish out this Philadelphia Eagles Madden 21 flashback rebuild. So looking at Marcus Mariota, as far as a prospect is concerned, 78 overall. Again, these ratings are what their rookie ratings actually were in Madden. Mariota, 78 overall with that hidden dev trait. And we've been talking about, you know, uh, kind of reviving players. We got that with Matt Elam. We drafted him two years ago. That, like, this Eagles franchise, for the most part, in this rebuild, has not been about reviving the players. And now we're going to have probably the biggest opportunity in reviving the career of Marcus Mariota. A player, when he was coming out of Oregon, was supposed to set the league on fire. And really, outside of, you know, some... Some high-level play with the Tennessee Titans. Most of his career has been spotty, to say the least. And yeah, this was at that time. I mean, you can even go back. I have Eagles videos talking about back when Mariota was coming to Oregon, how he would have been a great. But actually, I did an Eagles series about what if Marcus Mariota actually came to the Philadelphia Eagles. And now we get to vicariously through this franchise just see what would have happened if Chip Kelly and the Philadelphia Eagles would have been able to draft Marcus Mariota. The rest of the draft class, I grabbed Eric Rowe in the second round. Very similar to the Philadelphia Eagles. I love this pick when it happened. We needed help at corner, so I brought him in. This was just a fun pick. We have no, we have Dre Archer, but really we have no backup depth behind LaShawn McCoy. Running back David Johnson was there in the third round. He went in the third round, so it wasn't cheesing or anything crazy like that. Happy to have him 71 with a hidden dev trait. We grabbed Nick Boyle here, one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL. We need a tight end too. Uh, weirdly enough, though, I need like a pass-catching tight end. This is just best tight end available. I don't know if he's really going to solve our issues, but there's a chance he's going to start as tight end one for a rookie uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles. We've got Steven Nelson, who actually in real life for the Philadelphia Eagles in 2021 uh, could actually end up being one of our free agency signings at corner. He just got released by the Steelers. He's a 65 normal. I got Josh Lambeau because we didn't have a kicker on the roster. We let Dan Bailey, two-time kicker of the year, hit free agency. Lambeau 69 with a hidden dev trait. So I'm excited about landing that. And then I just finished with a depth lineman. But the Chip Kelly, Marcus Mariota years in Philadelphia are about to start. Let's fucking go. There's a quick refresher of where our Philadelphia Eagles are at as we kind of rebuild. It seems weird to say begin a rebuild because we're still an 89 overall squad. It's really just the coach and the quarterbacks that are changing. But Mariota will be our new franchise quarterback, hopefully under center. We got LaShawn McCoy, David Johnson, at running back. Macklin, Deshaun Jackson, and Antonio Brown at wide receiver. Nick Boyle, the rookie, gets to start at tight end. Garrick Selleck there. Offensive line remains the same with Solder. Sean Andrews, Jason Kelsey, Joel Batonio, and Jason Peters. The defense has always kind of been underrated, led by Asante Samuel, a veteran. Has started regressing, but he's still... One of the best lockdown corners in the NFL. Ball hawking corners as well. Trent Cole, likewise, near the end of his career here. 
32, but still a productive edge rusher for us. In terms of youth, Geno Atkins, 86 superstar at defensive tackle, is a stud, as is Navarro Bowman at left outside linebacker here with his superstar X-Factor 27, just starting to enter his prime. Same with Harrison Smith at strong safety. So I'm very optimistic that we're going to we're gonna do some damage this year. Let's actually kick Jordan Porter because of the dev trade up just a little bit. But I'm thinking Mariota's going to hit the ground running. I think we're going to have 19 touchdowns in this first game, which we are going to play. There's no way we're not playing Chip Kelly and Marcus Mariota's debut. But has there ever been a situation like that where a college, highly touted college coach and top tier quarterback in the draft have they ever paired up in the NFL at the exact same time? I don't think so. Could be wrong. Could something could have weird happen in like the 70s and the 80s. But we're about to make history as far as I know. Chip Kelly, Marcus Mariota going from Oregon to the Philadelphia Eagles. And they're going to absolutely light up the Tennessee Titans in their own backyard. All right, let's go. Marcus Mariota's first drive in the NFL. Uh, to make it easy, there's not... Oh. There's not actually a like a air raid. Like I feel like the spread air raid. We're gonna go Cliff Kingsbury, Arizona Carlos. I feel like that's probably the closest offense that replicates what Chip Kelly tried to do with Philadelphia and the 49ers in the NFL. Let's see if we get some points on this opening drive. Chip's happy with it. Macklin first pass for Mariota, an absolute dime. Come on, Deshaun. Come on, Deshaun. Boom. Deshaun Jackson follows that up with another big play. All right, let's go read option. Third and goal. We got to watch the defensive end, that linebacker. I'd love to be able to find a way to get a QB keeper here. I have not run the read option in a very long time. Ah, probably should have kept with the QB. Ah, Chip Kelly, right? What do we do? What do we know about Chip Kelly? We go for it. We absolutely go for it. Something like this, like a weird touch pass to Antonio Brown. That's as weird. That's almost as weird as we probably need a Chip Kelly first touchdown to be. And it is Antonio Brown gets it. And that's technically the first touchdown pass in Marcus Mariota's NFL career. Well. Eight weird things happen when you're a rookie, I suppose. Bill QB keeper, don't fumble it this time. And he fumbles. God damn it. Rookie trying to do too much. He's just trying to do too much. Oh my God. I'm not even standing a chance here, man. Come on, Marcus. Man, this is the alternate reality game, right? Rookie Marcus Mariota playing against the Tennessee Titans. Got... Looking really good as a passer. Oh, that's double coverage. That could be a pick. But, you know, 11 to 15, 181 yards, one touchdown, no picks is good. The three fumbles. Ugh. It's annoying. Oh, my God. We got it right behind him. Oh, and he got baited. There's a flag. I'd love to see a I don't hate that interception, though. Antonio Brown got real open in the middle of that field there. Kind of baited by the safety, I suppose. No harm, no foul. We still got a chance. Even with all the turnovers, we have a chance in the second half. Man, Mariota has he does not have a pretty deep ball. I don't know what that throw animation is. I'm going to fix that because that is such a slow release. But hey, good job to draw the P.I. on Drake or Patrick in the end zone. Ball spotted on the one. We're not going to be cute. We're not going to go for a QB keeper. Let's just give it to the best running back in the NFL and try to get ourselves back in this game and win it as we tie it up 14 apiece. Go, go, go. You're the fastest wide receiver of the game. You should not get caught up. When a slate's cheese goes, you're... Fucking bullshit! Whatever, whatever. Enjoy the free touchdown, Shady. Still counts. Eagles take the lead. God, with the fumbles! All right, let's go a little bit. No, let's actually. I like that Deshaun Jackson plays mesh route, uh, but we need to score. I have a feeling that the Titans will score, and we'll have to get another score. To try to win this game. So we'll go to Deshaun in space. He's not getting caught up there. Lots of yards, over 400 yards for Marcus Mariota in his debut game. Let's see if the defense can get a stop, and we can put this one away. 
But look, oh, look at that. They go for it on fourth down. Don't get it. We can kill this one off and get a victory in our first game with Chip and Marcus. Now, it wasn't the prettiest of victories, but we managed to hold on 28-24. Marcus Mariota, 74% completion percentage, 395 yards, two touchdowns, a pick. Three fumbles. It, it it didn't go to play. Deshaun Jackson, eight, five catches, 168 yards. But this is a you know phenomenal start for the Philadelphia Eagles. Phenomenal start for the new era in Philly. What do they call it in Philly? It was like speed kills era. It's, I think, how we kind of are supposed to remember the Chip Kelly tenure. But that's an excellent start there. As Marcus Mariota out duels Vince Young. And Philly starts the year 1-0. So at roughly the midway point of the season, not bad at all, 5-0. and Washington football team also 5-0, and the two top dogs within the NFC. Okay, I'm just going to sim this one before we before we start looking at anything. Who is the dominant team, at least in the sim? It is, ah, uh, not us. So we fall, Washington first place in the East. Um, but hey, 5-0, and 5-1 and now. That is not a bad start with a rookie head coach and a rookie quarterback. Uh, for contracts, let's see what we got here. Expensive players, not expensive players. Do we have a lot of salary cap? Do we not have? We have an okay amount. So I think first up, we'll get Johnny Hecker because he's obviously one of the best punters in the NFL. I think Demario Davis, very important part of our defense. Let's lock him up till he's 30. Nate Solder, a tackle. These guys do not grow on trees. Anytime you have a good tackle, I always stress the importance of trying to get these guys to resign. Might have to be the end of Asante Samuel here. We don't have enough to give him that one year, and I'd much rather prioritize the younger players than getting Asante Samuel on a one-year rental. And at the end of the season, everything was on the line week 17. We avenge our loss to Washington and beat them 45-23, and we have had a really low pay. I think we lost five in a row, five or six in a row, but we finished 9-7, and seven, second place in the NFC East, and that was just good enough to sneak into the wild card. We have... Uh, Tread Cole talking about his Sunday saving. Maybe we don't have to worry about resigning him. It looks like he might be leaving, I guess. So we'll grab that morale boost for the defense as we come in. We must be the final seed. Yeah, we're the seventh seed. Makes sense. Um, all right, well, how do we get here? Well, first up, let's see the dev traits. On the offensive side of the ball, Marcus Mariota is a superstar dev trait. Uh, again, fitting. Makes sense. Him and Jameis Winston both are going to be pulling that superstar dead because when they were coming out, a lot of people thought they're going to be the next great thing. Um, how he's going to be able to, you know, develop though and actually like, you know, is, is he going to maximize that depth rate? Is he actually going to play well so he gets a bunch of XP and becomes a franchise quarterback? That is still yet to be determined, obviously, from our very limited gameplay with him. Lots of turnovers. Uh, David Johnson's depth rate has yet to be unveiled. On the defensive side of the ball, we had no dev trade scenarios, no hidden dev rookies or anything like that. So let's see. How did the offense look? How did the team in general look? But how did the offense look? Marcus Mariota, not bad for a rookie debut. 4,100 yards, 32 touchdowns to 14 picks. 70% completion percentage is, you know, it, it's not bad. Obviously, the scrambling numbers are horrific, but that's just Madden for you in a nutshell. Running backs, David Johnson, LaShawn McCoy combined, really, really solid. Uh, no thousand yard receiver, almost two thousand yarders, and Deshaun Jackson, and Antonio Brown. I had nice seasons. Um, Nick Boyle, five thirty and three. Not bad, I guess. Defensively, Harrison Smith led the team with ninety nine tackles. We had twelve sacks from Trent Cole, eight and a half from Geno Atkins, and on the interception front, three from Demario Davis, three from Matt Elam. And he's for a bust. He's kind of carved out a nice role here. Next to Harrison Smith back there in the secondary. Yearly Awards MVP went to Jay Cutler. He's really good. Uh, in the NFC, I was playing, he went to Jay Cutler. Defensive player, he went to John Beeson. Offensive rookie, he went to, oh, went to Jameis Winston. Beating out Marcus Mariota. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Good to know. Good to know, though. Uh, for the rest of the individual awards, Sean Andrews got lineman of the year. Jason Peters was the runner-up. So we have uh, those two guys really as the anchor on the offensive line as we enter into the playoffs first playoff game good to get our feet wet for chip kelly and marcus mariota this early into their nfl careers let's see what we could do against the dominant force known as jay cutler and his chicago bears i think we'll be good oh it's a snow game okay turnover prone rookie in a snow game i'm sure it's only gonna be able to end up one way but let's see what we can do an opening drive we get a touchdown happy with that Ooh. 
All the momentum going the way of the Philadelphia Eagles in the first half. Two instant touchdowns damn near as we're up 21-3. I guess Mariota's put them on skates 28-3 into the second half. This should be bearing a utter collapse. Very convincing wildcard victory for the Philadelphia Eagles here. Seeing immediate dividends after moving on from Andy Reid and Michael Vick, which not too many people would have seen, especially me when I saw that five, six game losing skid at the midway point of the regular season here. But this is a clinic. 35 to 10. They get the job done. Mariota on fire. 299 yards, four touchdowns on the game as Philadelphia is moving on to the NFC Divisional Round. Oh my God. I wasn't even thinking. I had a brain fart. I simmed that game. I simmed we played Washington. I simmed that. I was just like, oh my God, I just ruined the goddamn video. Um, just to prove I wasn't doing any shenanigans. We, we beat him authentically. 31 to 15. Mariota, two touchdowns, two picks. Did just enough to outduel uh, RG3 there. Look at that. Two touchdowns, David Johnson. Um, Macklin had a nice game on the defensive side for our Philadelphia Eagles. Got some pressure there. Three sacks, a interception for Poyer and Eric Rowe. That, that new era of corner for the Philadelphia Eagles as they have done enough to punch their ticket to the NFC Conference Championship game. Nine and seven Eagles, nine and seven Cardinals. Let's get into it. We win the Super Bowl year one of uh, the Oregon connection here in Philly. I don't know what to tell you other than this is probably my greatest accomplishment since I've uh, become a Madden YouTuber. Let's see here. Super Bowl on the line, Arizona and Philadelphia. Arizona, a team that has always caused the Philadelphia Eagles uh, issues since I've been a fan. Uh, it's not looking particularly good. We are getting skunked here in the first half. If we get a touchdown to go in the second half, that'd be great for momentum. And we absolutely do that. But we start the second half out with a damn near instant touchdown. Back to back. Making a one score game here. Impressive. Need our defense to get a stop. Mm, come on. They do. Oh, we can tie it up. We kill for the field goal. That's not Chip Kelly. But we have a buck 36 to go in the fourth quarter. I really want to come in, but also, I don't know. I think it'd be a little anticlimactic to win everything year one. So if, the, if it's destined to happen, the Sim will have Philadelphia get the go ahead lead here. Buck 36, fourth quarter, Super Bowl on the line. Touchdown will put us in the lead. Oh my God. They're. Oh, I just want to watch this play. Mm, I, okay, no, we're just going to skip it. Oh, well, what? They took a safety or some shit? What happened there? Like a fumble recovery as a safety? Let me see that score summary. What? The safety? All right, I don't know. It was an epic game, though. Cam Newton, Cam Marcus Mariota going head-to-head. -head. We definitely didn't lose that game because of Marcus Mariota. I think the defense... Definitely fell a little bit flat. Struggled too much to contain and stop Cam Newton. But a hell of a debut year for Chip and Marcus Mariota. Going all the way to the NFC Championship game and being that close to going to the Super Bowl. So as we go into the offseason, first little bit of news for retirements. Asante Samuel has retired. So at least it's like not like we have to go and let him die and windle away with the Atlanta Falcons. Like kind of what happened in real life to end his career. He gets to go out kind of on top on a competitive team. Which I am happy about. I also got to check the team here to see if we got any end of season dev trade upgrades. And we actually did on the defensive side of the ball. Demario Davis went from a star up to a superstar now as an 86 overall outside linebacker. 27 years old. Uh, he's been really, really solid for us. So I'm happy that he is finally starting to get some recognition from the game. But look at that secondary. I am very worried. I hope we can get a good corner to, you know, there's, there's a couple first rounders. This is the Jalen Ramsey draft. In terms of corners, we're not going to get him. We're probably going to be much for the range of like an RD Burns or something like that. But we really do need to go after a lockdown corner in this offseason. And the best way to not do that is have zero dollars of salary cap. Oh, it'd be so nice to bring in Calvin Johnson, even though we absolutely don't need it. More so, I would like to bring in ugh, not even much, not even much at, at corner here. Like, ugh. The draft, I guess? I will say this. Now that we have Marcus Mariota as a reclamation project, we're looking at Matt Elam. Statistically, he's been solid, but not in terms of development and dev trade. I'm not going to pick up his fifth-year option. I'm going to see if that's going to be a kick in the ass that he needs to take his game to the next level here in the upcoming season. 
So as always, we will finish here at the draft and you guys can help me decide who we're going to select at pick 29. Very, very quick look at the squad and where we need to get better. Uh, could always be looking for a tight end. That's really it on the offensive side of the ball. And then when you flip to the defensive side, uh, D-tackle, if we could get someone, maybe the dev trade would be nice to pair with Geno Atkins. Definitely want to look at corner and keep in mind that we did not pick up the fifth-year option on Matt Elam if there is a nice option at safety. So let's just see who's available. Kenny Clark's gone. He would have been a nice pick for us, for sure. Um, hmm. So in the offense, we need a tight end. And Hunter Henry is there. That would make sense. Defensively, Vernon Butler, Chris Jones at the tackle. <coughs> Excuse me. Had to get that out of the way there. Uh, Ashawn Robinson, Jaron Reed, all those guys at D tackle would not be a bad pick at 29. Um, Miles Jack would be an interesting fit for our defense, even though we don't really need a linebacker per se. I haven't been overly impressed with Chris Borland's development, but corners, what do we got? We got Xavier Howard, who, of course, obviously the guy that's available is a player that we have recently used in a rebuild. We got Mackenzie Alexander here. Um, we need outside corner. So James Bradbury, very interesting. How is he only a third round talent? I can admit as a Philadelphia Eagle fan, he was insane last year for the Giants. Uh, Kendall Fuller, we all know his ceiling. He's fairly good. Don't know if he's going to be able to survive on the outside. He's been best used as a slot corner. Ooh, kind of a, it's kind of a tough draft. There are safeties available. Sean Davis, TJ Green, Kevin Byard, Von Bell, Justin Simmons way down here. I mean, that would be a little bit cheesy to get. Him, in particular, in the first round. But he's an option for sure. Uh, but ultimately, that's going to be our... I, I think we might have to go Hunter Henry. As badly as we need corner help, uh, I do feel like because we've used Xavier Howard not too long ago, and while Mackenzie Alexander's there, he's not the outside corner that we're looking for. Um, I mean, my suggestion... Again, I'm going to go with what you guys... You guys can say, go Chris Jones right away. I'm going to say maybe we go Hunter Henry and, oh, early first round talent. We go Hunter Henry and then I'll try and trade up in the second round to get James Bradbury. Maybe that's the direction we go. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below what you want to see us do at pick 29 here with the new and improved Philadelphia Eagles with Chip Kelly and Max Merritt. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, this is definitely a turn that I was kind of hoping would happen I'm genuinely excited to, to finish out this year and see what kind of levels we can reach with Marcus, with Chip Kelly, because it is such an alternate reality, what if, realistic scenario for the Philadelphia Eagles, and we get to act that out here in the flashback rebuilds, which is kind of the point of doing a series like this. I mean, I'm experiencing this because I'm an Eagles fan, and I kind of want to see what happens, but I assume when I, when I do your guys' favorite teams, and I, and I do some of those what ifs and some changes and stuff that have happened historically over the last 10 years or so with your favorite teams, it's the same thing, so it's... It's exciting. It's fun. I'm very, very happy to be doing it. So let me know, though, right now, where do we go? Pick 29. Do you like Hunter Henry and then maybe trying to get a James Bradbury in the second round if we have to trade up? Or do you want something completely outside the box like a Miles Jack, Chris Jones, or anything in between? That'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. Helps my videos in the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if it's your first time stopping by. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow with most likely a new Tom Savage Miami Hurricanes episode. Till then, it's C4, saying peace.